Okay, so now we're going to wrap this tutorial up here with the second part. And we're going to go ahead and get started with these global illumination settings here. So I'm using Cinema 4D Release 11.5. Now those of you that are going to be using a previous version, you should be able to follow along with this. However, for the render settings here, they have changed a little bit with the newer R11 releases. So what we want to do is go to Effect, and we want to find Global Illumination. And for the GI mode, we want to change this to Sky Sampler. Now for right now, the samples are fairly low at 64, and we're going to leave them there for the time being. We'll come back later and take those up. All right, now if we hit the Render Preview button again, all right, there you go. Now that's not looking too bad. Now I did go back and I changed the color here uh, for the bluish white gradient because the material was way too blue and it was actually creating uh, too much blue here in our scene so I actually took this color here and instead of having it a darker blue like I did I actually lightened it up quite a bit so that more than likely that's one thing you, that uh, you'll have to play around with in order to get it to match your scene correctly so the next thing we want to do is apply material to our plane here for the ground. So let's take this material that we use for the background and drag it to the plane. So we'll make a preview render and you'll notice that it's there but it's oriented wrong and it's not looking right. And the reason for that is because we need to change the projection to frontal. Frontal is always going to be looking at the camera and that's what the background here has. If you click on the material tag for the background you'll notice the projection is set to frontal. So we need to do the same for the material for the plane. So let's change the projection from UVW over to frontal. Now we'll do another preview render and everything's lining up. Now the problem that we're going to have to deal with here is you'll notice that where the plane is at it's darker and it's got a bluish tint to it. And the reason for that is because of course it's being affected by the global illumination sky that we have in there. So in order to fix that right click on the plane and go to Cinema 4D Tags Compositing and we just want to enable this compositing background option make another preview render and now the problem is solved so now what we want to do is throw in a light into this scene in order to mimic the sunlight so you'll need to you'll need to figure out exactly where the sun is at in your image so that we can position a light in the correct location in order to have the shadows going in the correct direction. So I already know where the sun is at in this shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an infinite light. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to Cinema 4D Tags Target. And here for the Target tag you'll notice it says Target Object and what this is saying is where do you want this light to be pointed? What do you want it to be targeting or pointing at? and what we want to do is point it at the plane so take the plane and drag it into the target object So let's take the light and to orient this a little better I'm gonna jump out of this camera back to the editor camera and we need to find the orientation here I want to make sure I'm pointed the right way okay and we want to take this light up and in this case my light needs to be over to the left a little bit and up like so probably a little bit more to the left alright that looks pretty good now we want to set up the light so let's go to the light here general the intensity we're gonna leave at 100 for the moment shadow I'm gonna set that to area shadow and for the color if we jump back to the main camera and we do a little preview render again you'll probably notice that the color is gonna be all white and that's not really mimicking the scene. We actually need to give it more of a warm sun tone, which is probably going to be a bit of an orangish yellow color. So I'm going to take this and give it some orange and some yellow here. We may need to go a little a little bit more than that. Okay, yeah, maybe just a little bit more. And the intensity looks a bit bright, so I'm going to drag this down. Let's try maybe 70%. still looks a little bright so we'll take it down to 50 alright that don't look too bad I think we may need to position the light uh, a little bit more over towards the left just so we can get a bit more shadow to show up
All right, that should be good enough for now. So we'll make one more little preview render here. All right, there we go. So now we got a little bit of a shadow poking out here, and it's beginning to look a little better. So one last thing here, we'll just set this up for the final render. So we're going to take our samples, and we're going to double this. So we'll take it up to 128. Go to Output. That's set to where we want it. We're going to go to Anti-Aliasing, and we want to change this to Best. And for this, we'll go 2 by 4. And we'll take the threshold down just a little bit here, maybe to about 5. So I'm going to hit Render to Picture Viewer. It's going to come up here in the viewer. And we'll just zoom in here on this a little bit to 100%. So you can see on my 8-core machine, it is taking a few seconds here to uh, complete. Now if we were using uh, some standard lighting in here, like some spotlights, uh, the, the render would probably already be done by now. But of course this is global illumination and anyone that has used it before knows that it does take longer to render. So I'll just give this a minute here to uh, finish up. Almost done, and then we'll just quickly look over the results. All right, so let's jump to 100%. Okay, so there you go. You can see we've got some nice even lighting in there. Got our shadow showing up here on the ground. Everything looks really good here. Got a shadow there. All right, so. This concludes this tutorial on compositing, so thank you for watching guys.